this is a 70 year, 73 year old female. She's in great shape generally. No surgeries except for a cesarean section uh, for one of her three children. She's married to her husband who she's been married to for 50 years. And he has been a triathlete for 30 years. And for the past six years, she finally decided that she was gonna stop being a spectator and become a participant herself. So for the past six years, she's been doing duathlons and running and just finally ran her first half marathon right before COVID started. She plays tennis doubles three to four times a week. And she just started running again um, and the reason she had stopped running is because of a back issue. Uh, and I will tell you more about that in a minute. She was wearing um, a copper belt, she said, and she said that really helps her so she can play tennis. Uh, but she went, she decided to go for this 10 minute run just the other day and um, she could feel the back pain come back. So um, she says she's in pretty good shape for her age. She's lost one inch total height. Right now she's about nine pounds heavier than her usual, um, but she's avoiding unnecessary foods and she thinks she can take that weight off easily. Uh, and she thinks that's just because of during COVID, she wasn't as active. So she talked to me about her main issue, which is her back right now. And she had a couple of events that she thinks might have led up to this back pain. First, she started telling me about, uh, about three weeks ago, she went to a wedding and she decided to wear four inch kind of stiletto-ish heels, which she's never worn in her life. But she said they were comfortable and they fit the outfit and the occasion. And she decided she was gonna wear them. And she danced a lot in them, but she was fine the next day. A week later, she went to Thanksgiving dinner um, and decided to wear some boots with a two inch heel uh, to the Thanksgiving dinner. And then after dinner, uh, the group of them decided to go for a walk and they're in San Francisco and they ended up walking up and down a ton of hills, um, which she still felt okay the next day. But uh, a week ago, um, she went to a football game to watch a football game, but it was an hour and a half drive to the football game. So she went to rotate herself and get out of the car and she felt something go funky in her right back. She, she said she turned and she felt, ooh, something happened. So that night, um, she said she walked around to the game. She felt fine. When she went to bed that night, she um, had back pain and has had it ever since. So something else that happened, uh, let me see where the timeline is. Sorry about that. Um, so a month ago, so somewhere in the middle of all of this, she was playing tennis and she overextended to reach a ball to, that was coming overhead. So she overextended and she overextended the right shoulder and hurt it. Um, she went to the doctor at that time and the doctor told her that her rotator cuff was strained and it would get better in two weeks, but her shoulder is still hurting her somewhat. She's not aware of it when she's playing tennis, um, but she knows that it's not quite right yet. So that happened. And then all these other things, the shoes to the wedding, uh, the walking at Thanksgiving, and then the going to the football game. So she has had no other history of back issues. She did take a fall 30 years ago um, went to a chiropractor, fall down the stairs and went to a chiropractor. The chiropractor told her at that time that she would need to see the chiropractor for the rest of her life because of the way the shape of her spine. Um, she says she has not gone back to that chiropractor and she's not needed a chiropractor and she's been fine her whole life. But the reason she brought that up was because she said the chiropractor told her that the shape of her torso and her thoracic spine and her shoulders was so forward that she was going to have chronic pain. So she is, I haven't done a huge eval on her yet, but her upper body is kind of, this is her posture, sort of rolled forward in her shoulders and a little forward in the head. So she thinks that maybe that posture might've predisposed her to this back pain. She, um, 
doesn't have scoliosis. Now that she's had this back issue for the first time in her life, she's hearing her spine clicking when she moves somewhat. Um, she is concerned about her posture and she's saying that her abdomen pushes out when she tries to stand up tall. Like she can't figure out how to get her tummy in. She says her mom and her grandma both had tummies that stuck out. She thinks it's something to do with their natural shape, but neither one of them were, were athletic. So, um, and then the last thing she threw in there was that she had elbow pain at one point but that is now gone. She had acupuncture one time and that healed it. And then um, she also said she feels like she has weak calves and would like to get those stronger. Um, somehow she feels like she doesn't have enough power in her calves for running and tennis. All right, that is the story. So anything come to mind? Where, where do you start with this person? <laughs> Uh, I guess I'd, yeah, I guess I'd want to look at her, what's the shape of her back. So I okay. would look at her posture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it sounds like she has a forward head posture and I'm not thinking of the scientific that she has like a, probably an arched back. Kyphotic, maybe? Yeah, yeah, if her, yeah, if her tummy sticks out, and I would imagine that um, she has, uh, I know, maybe she has hyperextended knees, uh, if her calves mm -hmm. are kind of weak. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's where I would start, with her posture, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that um, kind of fixed posture in kyphosis, uh, do you remember our um, little posture charts from the Kendall book? And we have the different kinds of postures that we see in the Kendall book, the normal posture, sway back posture, um, forward, was it kyphotic posture? And then there's one that's kyphotic lordotic. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? So really kind of curved and then bigger arch in the lower back. Um, mm. if, if I'm just trying to imagine now, I haven't looked at her body yet. So this is all in theory, but I'm guessing that if she's stuck in that a little bit of a forward position that she may be that kyphotic lordotic posture. So mm. I'd be looking for that which, you know, there are different ranges of normal there, but if, she, if a chiropractor would look at her and say, oh, you're gonna need help the rest of your life, it might be because the chiropractor saw something that maybe that was one of it. So definitely, I think you're right on track by looking at her posture um, and starting there and starting with back and maybe starting with back stability stuff because, because of her goals, right? What are her goals? Play tennis and run, right? Uh -huh. So we've, we've got to get that center of her strong if we want to prevent back pain anyway, right? So that's a, always a great starting place. But what, um, if you start to put the pieces of the puzzle together, so we have a bunch of information. We have wearing super high heels and dancing in them, no pain. We have wearing two inch heels and hiking up and down hills in it. And before all this, we have a shoulder issue on the same side from reaching overhead in tennis. So what, um, when, can you imagine the movement that she did playing tennis? Probably something mm -hmm. like a, going for a, going for mm -hmm. a ball of height. So probably a lot of height. A lot of, yeah. la and what is that? Where does the racket go straight? out to the side or across the body? Um, I haven't played tennis. I'm getting to play <laughs> tennis, but um, I, and I, I keep hitting my ceiling, but I would imagine that it, if she's reaching high, it, yeah, it's, it's probably she's, yeah, just hitting, hitting it down. Yeah. Nope, hitting it's going it across her body. Oh, okay, it's, up and then so to the side. <laughs> it's, it's coming up, it's gonna come across her body. Oh, Even that, if she's okay. hitting it from above. Yep. Okay, kind of like so. 
the swakity mm -hmm. kind of thing. Okay. Yes, like a swakity thing, exactly. So what's going to happen in her body if her arm's going across her body? What's going to happen? She's probably going to rotate her torso. Exactly, which is going to do what to her spine? Uh, it's going to put comp compression on it, especially in no, the also lower the lower area. Mm -hmm. it, there you go. And it's going to right, and it's going to create a rotation in the spine, right? Mm -hmm. So not in a good way, probably. So maybe I mean it's all right. Tennis rotates the spine. Golf rotates the spine. It's all good as long as it's not dysfunctional, right, or causing pain. Yeah. Um, or it's it's even, which I wonder if it's even or not. She's playing a lot of tennis. I wonder how much forehand versus backhand she's doing. But uh -huh. let's say let's say for example you have an injury in your shoulder from hitting and you're hitting in a diagonal and then what usually happens when you have an injury what do you what does your body naturally want to do uh kind of brace a little bit guard mm -hmm. yeah it's going to want to brace and protect that you from that injury so uh -huh. where if you still have to hit and you still have to swing across your body where might you be compensating for that lack of motion now at the shoulder um the waist or the the hip mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep it's gonna happen in the waist or the hips which is basically in your spine mm -hmm. right so now you do that for a month repetitively and what's going to start happening you're, it's gonna it's gonna not yeah it's gonna get more twist like more compression mm -hmm. on joints mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. especially if you're not strong in the core already which mm -hmm. she said she's not because mm -hmm. right. it's gonna go into those like not as stable areas mm -hmm. and so what happens then when you wear high heels what's your posture what's the change in posture when you're wearing high heels I mean, I can just think of me like your compression on the lower back, your butt mm -hmm. sticking out, probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so all a your weight, more... your weight forward. Mm -hmm. And if you tend to be forward in your thoracic spine and you're wearing high heeled shoes, what's going to happen more in your lumbar spine? You said it already, but it's going to get more archy. Yeah. Kyphotic. Archy, more arching, more lordotic in the lumbar spine more to compensate. Mm -hmm. So belly is going to go further forward, low back is going to curve more and be, to compensate for the upper back getting thrust forward by the high heel shoes. Mm -hmm. And all of that, along with rotation, causes more compression on the low back. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So now we just said that if she's playing tennis and she's hitting right arm, right arm overhead hit is going to come across the body in the left hand direction. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's had that injury. She's been guarding, let's just say, for a month. Mm -hmm. And so maybe she's been getting a little extra rotation, especially going in that direction to the spine. So that would be a, like a left rotation. Mm -hmm. And then she goes and wears these high heeled shoes that's going to thrust her into a little bit more extension than she's used to because she doesn't normally wear high heel shoes, but just happened to have these two incidents where she's first dancing in them and then hiking in them, basically. And then she's a passenger in the car. And she goes to get out of the car. And when you go to get out of the car, which way do you rotate? To your right. You're rotating to your right. So we've been rotating to the left. We've arched mm. forward. And now all of a sudden we go to rotate to the right and we get pain. Because mm, she's not, yeah, it's too, it's too tight that direction because she's so more flexible the other. She has imbalance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's gotten herself stuck in that rotation. Mm -hmm. she's gotten herself stuck in that left rotation she goes to rotate right and she can no longer do it and what happens she spasms basically so muscle spasm is probably something that's going on and that's what the doctor probably thought happened because the doctor said to her oh you're having the doctor actually from her words the doctor said it's a muscle spasm it's going to get better on its own mm -hmm. that's what the doctor told her so she said it is getting a little better every day but 
When she gets up in the morning, she has a lot of pain, especially and mostly with rotation, any rotation in the right lower back. When she sits mm. and turns, she, she feels a click in the lower back. Mm -hmm. All right, mm. so what, what does this all make, extension and rotation problem, what does this make you think of? Uh, jog your memory, the lumbar spine course. <laughs> facet or mm -hmm. no, yes or exactly no no arthritis oh, okay. yep okay you said it you said it what did you say facet, facet joint okay rotation extension facet joint okay mm -hmm. that's exactly what i thought of mm. um yes so what are contraindications for facet joint dysfunction extreme rotation and mm -hmm. extreme extension any or extension, extension. Really. yeah mm -hmm. extension and yeah. rotation yes so she was already so she already uh, did those things which but I, why she didn't she did... feel pain right away though like this in her you know, back yeah, like she said, she felt pain later, or was it just it didn't translate until then because of the type of pain it was? Oh, she felt pain in the moment when she rotated. There was a moment of, uh, but then she got up and she moved around and she was okay. But she was mm -hmm. moving in sort of a neutral position. But if that joint then got a little stuck with that rotation, mm -hmm. As long as her muscles are warm, she'd probably be okay. But when she stops, mm. what are the muscles gonna do? Just, yeah. They're gonna grab because something's not aligned right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm gonna check her posture. And the other thing I'm gonna do is check her spinal motion. Um, and I'm also just gonna look at her shoulder motion. Because I ah. wonder is what's happening. What happens when she actually lifts her arm overhead? Is she lifting her arm overhead or is she arching her back to lift her arm overhead because the shoulder is sore and doesn't have full range of motion? Yeah, she's, she's probably arching her back. Yeah, I would think so. If her shoulder's hurting, she's going to go to her back um, to arch, right? You see, you see that if people lay down flat on their back and then try and reach their arm overhead, and they don't have the range of motion in their shoulder, what happens, right? You know exactly what happens. Yeah, they're gonna arch their back, yeah. Arch their back mm -hmm. up, yeah. Yeah, so, so yeah, I mean, well done. That was not an easy, <laughs> easy no, thing, but I just, I, I, I yeah. love to, yeah, I love taking these apart and trying to see what the pieces of the puzzle might be. And so looking for key things in what people tell you, and it's not that you have to diagnose it. I don't know, it, I'm guessing, I have no idea. I've not even looked at her posture yet, but mm -hmm. just based on her history, those are the questions I put in my head. Hmm. Mm. There's a rotational issue, there's an extension issue, there's a shoulder injury and a back injury on the same side that the shoulder started with an overextension in tennis, which is, going to be a rotational motion right so that's i just start thinking about okay i've got a rotational problem and extension problem and if i if i have pain with rotation and extension what are some of the things that could cause that so you just start rolling through trying to piece those things together and and mm -hmm. if you if if she were to come to you even i'm again not supposed to diagnose anything but if she were to come to you you would know exactly what to do you said it i'm going to look at her posture but you maybe also want to think through, have rolling in your head okay what did else she did she, did she tell me i want to maybe see can she rotate or does she have any limitation at her shoulder you know those are uh -huh. the questions maybe just to start asking yourself or ask her and then look at when you see her move uh -huh. yeah uh -huh. okay yeah, that was that was um, hard because I didn't have Genevieve, but <laughs> I know she's driving, so I was like, okay, okay, yeah. But thank you. Yeah, that was um, yeah a challenging one. Yeah. Um, so I think mean, just curious then, someone like 
so it sounds like did she like put her back out too or it seems like her just with the spasming and the rotation is that that's a, like a back out kind of thing yeah i mean so initially no initially, oh, initially i think no okay I, I don't think it happened i don't think while the tennis injury happened the shoulder injury happened i don't think there was a back issue at that moment but what oh, just, what she did that was an excessive strain right so excessive uh -huh. strain on the shoulder but she kept playing tennis and she's kept playing tennis and uh -huh. the shoulder's not right the shoulder's still hurting her so if she's not getting full shoulder motion or having shoulder pain and she still has to get rotation where are you going to start going for that rotation yeah yeah it's going to get into the parts that rotate or supposed to rotate better yeah the back yeah and then you go and put somebody in high heels who has a thoracic kyphosis and what are they going to do to compensate they're pull yeah they're good yeah pull themselves into extension and mm -hmm. what absolute what joints don't like extension and rotation it's that, that joint that, that joint yeah yeah okay well so um, the, and then she went to rotate the other way than the way uh -huh. she's been rotating to play tennis i mean she's been rotating for backhand probably also to the right but maybe not with the same amount of force but she went to do another rotational motion in the yeah. opposite direction and that's when things went mm -mm. not yeah. doing that right now yeah yeah i just wasn't like ready for that um mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, yeah, she probably has some, yeah, just some imbalances there, even like how far she can, you know, well, it's already, you know, how far she can twist or, you know, what hip is looser or tighter, that kind of stuff I would imagine too. So yeah. when do you, when do you see her? I think next week I'll get to see her and it will probably oh, okay. be with one of you guys. So um, maybe it'll be, maybe it'll be you, Allegra, or maybe you, Genevieve. Um, that I get to see her with. So you'll know what I'm already thinking now. <laughs> and okay. then we can see what her posture looks like. So, and if not, I can re, re um, present what I actually saw in the, the eval um, if, if you guys aren't there for it so that you can have an idea. If it, we can see, is this, I could be totally wrong. Like I said, I've not even looked at her posture yet. I've seen her sitting down and i've seen as much of her as you're seeing of me right now that's it yeah so this is this is all based on history it's totally just hypothesizing but it's it's like i i like to see every person as a puzzle and i'm just trying to fit those pieces together going okay why would the body do that what mechanisms might have you know why might she be having this pain what is that steps that were leading up to this you know mm -hmm yeah yeah totally yeah it'll be interesting to to see um yeah but dang good for her starting to buy athletes six years ago i don't know if I would have done that. yeah at age at age 60, 62 or 62? whatever no 65 yeah. six 66 yeah well no more um 67 is when yeah, she started doing triathletes and triathlons and ran her first half marathon at uh 70. well i buy that spirit that age mm -hmm. i told her i want to be just like you yeah um, I know. really you're an inspiration i want to be just like you yeah <laughs> so yeah, I know, totally. 